What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Sid Meier's Pirates, one of my longtime favorite games and in the previous episode we had done what was actually it's very very difficult to do we had defeated Montal Bon on his own territory we had gone and snuck a few people in through the front gate and beat him in a final duel in doing so we had gained all of the specialists in the game 100,000 gold and that had basically ended that had closed the book on that final storyline which has rendered it quite flat and finished now we're back in Petite Guave I went all the way back over here off camera because I knew nobody wanted to watch me sail around in circles let's pick up some new pirates we got 28 men right there sure some dancing shoes why not I'll take them let's get some dancing shoes just in case so he's in Cumana and he's got news about my grandfather. That's the next thing. So let's take a look at our list of things to do over the course of our playthrough. We're in pretty good health. I'd prefer to retire probably before the age of like 45. I mean, it's a pretty early retirement age. But then again, during this time period, if you live past the age of 30, it was pretty incredible. I think looking at our score chart, we've got to find three more treasures. We've got to find our grandfather, we've got to get married, and then we've got to start finding Lost Cities. That's basically the post-game. You can start to get Lost Cities before you defeat Montalban, I think, but I think for the most part, that's for after you defeat him. We've already beaten all the pirates, we haven't distributed the wealth more than once, so we don't have a whole lot of wealth right now, but this should skyrocket upwards once we divide another time. So what we want to focus on for right now is maxing out our relations with different factions. Let's focus first on, let's take a look at world politics. Everybody's at war with the Spanish, so now is the time to betray the Spanish one more time, beat them up, and gain tons of prestige with everybody else. So what I want to do right now is let's go to the governor. My dear Marquis Mildew, please come in. As you know, we are at war with the evil Spanish. The governor's beautiful daughter enters the room and seems quite taken with you and invites you to this evening's grand ball. We will accept her invitation. She shall accompany us for an evening of fine dancing. Oh, we're starting to get a five o'clock shadow. That's how you know we're getting older. That's one thing that I've noticed as I've gotten older too. There's like no point shaving because by the end of the night, you're already going to have like a five o'clock shadow. It's ridiculous. My grandfather used to have to shave like three times a day in order to keep himself in the military because they had the rules back in the Vietnam era. And he said he used to have to shade two to three times a day just based on the fact that he's just like a hairy dude. Like some guys are hairier than others. You know, you can't help it. Some guys got like the shoulder hair thing going on. I got like, I don't have that going on. And I don't know, I've, I've got like, I've got like mole problems or something. I don't know. I got lots of moles, but that's because I run in the sun every single day. I think that's the problem right there. I got little dabbits. I got little dollops of skin cancer going on or something all the time. Little pockets of that melatonin hanging out. Anyways. That's pretty associative with getting older. I mean, you got that 5 o'clock shadow that just never seems to go away. The follicles get large enough to where even after you get, like, the closest shave ever, you can still see them, like, through the skin. Oh, the fun things you have to look forward to, kids. The fun things you have to look forward to. I remember when I was like, I can't wait to grow a beard. And now I'm just like, well, time to shave for the 38th time today. It's part of adult life. It's like getting carded. Like, I used to hate getting carded. Now I'm like, all right, I don't even care when I get carded. I'm like, nice. <laughs> boosting my ego slightly as if that needed any help it is quite boosted already as far as might go as far as to say it was stolen red-handed so let's complete this dance I think oh, we got the slow dance that's the problem I know I recognize the song this is the song that always feels like it takes forever mash this thing out and then she's gonna get kidnapped soon I think that's the next phase of this whole thing is she gets kidnapped it's I think it's by Raymondo I think we have to go run down Raymondo and beat him up I almost forgot, a recent visitor told me wondrous tales of the fabled lost city of the Incas. I was able to make some quick notes. I trust you with their safekeeping. That is not going to be that helpful. That could be just about anywhere. We need at least another piece before we're going to be able to track that one down. I think the lost cities of the Incas give you quite a bit of cash, as I recall. I've already done everything here. Now that we're back on the main, we can unload this stuff. And so we shall. We have four months worth of food. That's okay, because we're about to go get in a fight. We should also probably go grab Mr. Connery before we pick fights with the Spanish. So let's go... I actually might hang out around San Juan and use that as my launch off point for getting all my promotions between the British and the French. Assuming the war doesn't break off in between here and like the next 10 minutes. In today's 20 minutes, god we're at 81. I think that might be the highest points I've ever had. Usually I just focus on like one thing when I play through. Different people play this game different ways and I'm not paying attention to the wind right now. Different people play this different ways and I tend to just focus on like one thing until I get bored and then once I get like all the pirates or something, I get cravings. Whether it's to beat up other pirates or whatever. And so once I've fulfilled that craving, I usually move on to doing something else. 
One thing I will say is that there is the likelihood, I need to refresh my memory on Age of Pirates, although I remember it being a little bit of a pain to get set up with Windows 7 the last time I did it. I think I had, but that was on my old PC, so we'll find out. I had some basic problems getting it set up the last time I played it, but it was on my old PC and I think we'll be alright this time around. I've just got to kind of get all the mods loaded up and everything. Age of Pirates 2 is looking like I may be able to do an LP of it, although there's no way for me to really, it's like Mountain Blade, there's no way for me to tell you how long that LP would go because you could definitely get up into the hundreds of episodes with that. I was going to take a look at Jeff Majors just to refresh my memory as to the mechanics and how to, there's like a skull and crossbones under the water right there, I think I pointed that out earlier already. I want to collect this bounty over here before I do anything else, we've got a toilet paper shipment waiting for us. A shipment of moist towelettes, paper towels, there we go, that's the word that I was looking for, paper Towels. Towels. De los papeles or something. Los papeles? I don't even remember if paper is female or male. I can't remember. I always find that, did they assign that arbitrarily, like linguistically, it, with new Spanish words, did they just assign that arbitrarily, whether or not they get the male or the female modifier, or is it done with some kind of pretext? I've always wondered about that. More pirates! Thirteen more men. Join my ship. We'll definitely buy that right now. The Itzapa is headed for... Oh, they're about to get attacked, that's why. Okay, so let's go ahead and fight with Mr. Connery. Our dueling is going to get really bad from here on out. Luckily, we don't have that much to worry about along with it. I mean, there's a very, very considerable delay now from when I'm pushing the buttons and when things actually happen. I know you're not going to be able to perceive that, but what you'll notice is that my swings just get slower over time. And while it may not be perceptible to you as a viewer, if you're playing the game, you can definitely feel there's like a half second to like a quarter second delay every time you do an action in a duel. So it's a good thing that we got Montel Bon out of the way because we really are sort of on the cusp of running out of our youth. Okay, and so he didn't even offer to bribe us because we have like everything in the game. That's good. I don't think I should talk to the governor. Instead, we're just going to hang out around San Juan and beat stuff up. And then we'll go collect all of our lovely bonuses. So there's a smuggler right there. We'll go take him out. The Brigantine. I love saying, I don't know why I like rolling my R's when I say Brigantine, but I do. It's one of those words that I really do feel as though it should be rolled. Brigantine. And then you've got to kind of get like your fancy man voice going on. Be like, oh, bring me some brandy. I like brandy, by the way. Even like E and J, which most people think is like nasty brandy. I still like it. I don't care. I guzzle that shit. Just like, nom, 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 nom. Drinking is bad, kids. Don't drink. There we are. So we've taken him off the boat. Hopefully he was actually smuggling something decent. Eh. He's smuggling okay stuff. I'm still thinking we should probably just hang out around here and beat up ships. Although we may be able to... Wasn't there a port? No, there's not. Okay, there's Santo Domingo over there. Santo Domingo's in a better trade lane. I think I'll go mess with Santo Domingo for now. I, I think Santo Domingo might be a smarter decision. We could also plunder some cities. We could get up to 300 pirates right now if we wanted to, which means we could plunder, like, smaller cities. I don't know how much gold we get out of it. Typically, it's, like, 2,000. I've gotten upwards of 8,000 from a city before if you blow up, like, one of the wealthy ones. You just have to look at how much wealth they have. You want to find one with a really tiny garrison, so their little fort right here, that's a big fort right there. You don't want the big fort. You want the little fort, but you want the city to look really, really nice. So you want it to say wealthy, but not have a big fort next to it, which is rare, because the AI seems to do a pretty good job at reinforcing its positions and making sure that... Everything is looked out for so that it doesn't get sniped by the other factions because they are on the lookout. We need some food. We need to beat up like anybody over here. There is a sloop of war over there. Let's go fight with him. Where'd he go? He vanished. It's crazy. Some Bermuda Triangle action right here. We're really getting beamed up. There's a trade ship. I knew there's a trade lane around here somewhere. I just got to get into it so I can start stealing stuff from people. The Spanish are the number one target for now. As you can see, the Spanish tend to be just like this never-ending... It's, it's the goose that lays the golden eggs. It's also like the golden calf. So essentially, it's like the golden calf that lays golden eggs. And also like barfs golden chimichangas. It's, there's no downside to beating up the Spanish most of the time in this game. And I apologize to my Spanish viewers. It's necessary. I wouldn't be to believe me. If the shoe was on the other foot and it was the Dutch that were at war with everybody or the British that were at war with everybody, I'd be beating up on them too. It's just sort of targets of opportunity. I think if we take down... Let's take down a couple more trade... What rank are we with the French? We're at Marquis. So we want to sort of focus on... 
Ooh, I started out into the wind. That's going to hurt me. We want to start out sort of working with the British, I guess, then. I mean, we've already got ourselves... It's going to take quite a bit of effort to get ourselves up to Duke with the French. Oh, they shifted the wind on me again. Damn. I need that wind to go somewhere else. Oh, they blew up one of my cannons. That's a dick move. That was my favorite cannon. Called her Daisy. Daisy the super awesome implement o murder. Another ship down and a bit more sugar. We should get ourselves a bounty fairly soon. Let's have a look and see. Not there yet. We're still making friends, I guess. I guess we could check in with the let's go check in with the lady over here and see if she's gotten kidnapped yet. If she got kidnapped, there's trade galleons. We could get another couple, but I don't know if there's a point right now. We'll we'll swing back after we go to Petit Guav. This is going to be a little bit of a farmy episode, and I realize that's not going to be to everybody's liking, but this is how the sausage gets made. So just enjoy it once it's all nice and finished. A grain transport right there. I think we've got plenty of food. I'm not worried about stocking up on that. And there we are. We'll see if the lady over here has anything for us. I know the British are going to have something for us, and I don't know. Oh, we've actually got... And Jamestown's too small right now. I think later on, Jamestown actually becomes like a real city. I mean, within the context of... It's important for... Either way, we can't collect... We can't collect loverly promotions from there. So let's just go to Petite Guave first. We'll see if maybe they bump us. I mean, if we get lucky, they'll bump us up to Duke right now. And then we won't have to worry about the French any longer. We could pick on them a little bit. I don't think we will, though. We've only taken, like, five ships since the last time I was here. Oh, really? We are a duke. Okay, well, there it is. We get 200 acres. And Duke Mildew, I'm glad that you were here. My daughter has been kidnapped by the evil Spaniard, Colonel Mendoza. It is said to be hiding in the city of Santiago. That's a real shame. Wait, did I accept that or no? Okay, I did. So let's go ahead and it put, usually it puts the positive option on top. I'm not sure why it put the positive option on the bottom. Let's go to Santiago, Cuba then. We'll be on our way out. Grab ourselves some cigars while we're there. Mm -mm -mm. Lovely, lovely vices. Let me drop off actually. We'll go right here first and let me get rid of some of this loot. Got a whole bunch of sugar, which would be a lot better task if we went out to the east. However, we're just going to sell it right here because we can. And I need to get rid of these ships so that we're not sailing slowly. And so that we can take more prizes along the way. Luxuries that are a great price here. That's good. So we've got a whole bunch of luxuries to get rid of. We can only have 90. So let me get rid of two tons right there. Go to the ship right. Upgrade that. Upgrade that. And there it is. We're all good to go. So we've got 314,000 gold. When we divide it, we should get 35%. Let's look. Get 30%, so we're almost at 100,000 gold. Never mind, we'll divide later. And so in order to get Mendoza... Oh, he's actually really, really close. Let's just make the run right now so that I don't have to waste time on it later. I always have this lurking fear that they're going to go up to Florida Keys or something later on. And I'm never going to see that individual again. There's Mendoza. I don't remember if Mendoza's hard. I guess we'll find out. I don't remember if Mendoza's a badass or not. This is slightly worrisome. I'm going to take the wind. Ah, I got him with 96. I'll go with the rapier, I guess, just in case. Oh, he's using a cutlass. He's a punk. He's not going to be able to do nothing. I mean, he'll be able to defend reasonably fast, but we might only be able to get him with thrust now that we're slower. I think that is the case. God, we're getting those rusty-ass joints right now. I'm not even sure what happened right there. I'm pretty sure I hit the button, but okay. I can get lazy now. We've already beaten Montalban. Defeated, and now we shall rescue the lady. I think he actually gives us a treasure map or something. Oh, never mind. I thought we had to go find her like we find everybody else. Hey. Oh, dear Duke Mildew, I dreamt every night that you would come to rescue me. Let us return to my father at Petit Guave and speak of our future together. Hell yeah, lady. Jump in the, the water whip, I guess. I was going to say jump in the whip, but it's not necessarily like a whip. It's the water whip. There we go. That's got alliteration. It works. So, can we ghost ride the boat? I don't think we can. Ghost ride the boat seems like it'd be impossible. 
I guess if you could put some kind of like raft along the side that was towed by a pipe so it maintained like the same velocity, you could jump onto the raft or you could like walk the plank next to the ship and you could ghost ride the raft or like ghost ride the ship. I don't know, that'd be kind of cool though. <laughs> that'd be hella funny. How do you gas break dip a ship? I think we need to look into this. <laughs> I need to know so that I can act a fool on the open seas. We'll take her back to Petite. God, what happened to the wind? There's like nothing right now. Wind? I don't know if you want to like come join me on this adventure or help me out a little bit, but it would be appreciated. I think we get the opportunity to get married right after we turn this in. I think. Not positive. Pretty sure. It's been a while. It's been a while. God. Remember when that song was on the radio like every day? Like Stained was just like this never ending problem. They were just always on the radio. It was like, oh my god. And then Fred Durst had to jump in on it and make it even worse. He's like, oh, I thought I thought to myself, how could this song get worse? And in my darkest dreams, I couldn't have ever thought that Fred Durst would join forces with Stain just to make this. Dear God. Yeah, we don't need that. I'd really, really love. Oh, he's actually headed to San Juan. Ooh. No, he left for Maracaibo. Never mind. So Maracaibo to Cumana. Wait, so who was it that just... I don't know. Let's go to the governor. I have an amazing story to tell you, my love. While held captive, I managed to obtain a piece of the map to the legendary lost city of the Incas. I will trust it to you for safekeeping. Oh, good. It's like, Incas! Or it just says gas right there. So whoever's in that cabin apparently is exclaiming the fact that they have sudden and painful gas. Father, I have much to tell you. However, I believe when Duke Mildew returns, he'll have a very important question to ask you. It is true. It is true. I like it and I'm going to put a ring on it. To quote the ever... Uh, I mean, all the single ladies was our rallying cry in the Mountain Blade playthrough. Ooh, Jack Rackham's treasure. Stonehead. I think Stonehead is down by... Oh, never mind. Stonehead is not a thing. It's right there. It's going to be down by Cartagena again. Or Car Did I say Cartagena? Dear God. Cartagena. It's going to be down there somewhere. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with my brain right now. I've had like this never-ending death spiral of just not sleeping lately. And it really is starting to just, I don't know. I have like these regular bouts with insomnia. And I know a lot of you out there know what I'm talking about. It's a personal problem. I don't know why it happens. It doesn't like make me anxious or anything like that. It's just like sometimes I don't sleep and sometimes I do. And I've learned to just live with it after a while. But I've noticed it definitely hurts your thought process. Like your brain just feels scummy when you don't sleep. It just feels like there's moss like growing on it or something. Like You know that scum that's on the top of your pool that you got to rake out? That's what I mean right there. If you don't have a pool, just like put a kiddie pool out in your front yard for a couple days. You'll see what I mean. It gets nar nar. We should probably go check in with the British before I make any long runs back down to the south. So let's head over to like Nevis or St. Martin or whatever. Let's see if we can get married first. We've only been gone for a couple of days, but I think that should be enough to reset the governor's daughter. Let's see here. The governor's beautiful daughter enters the room. Darling, how wonderful to see you again. Oh, good. We're on nickname terms. I'm going to call you Fuzzy Muffin. That's going to be my it's gonna be my relationship nickname, my PDA name for you in front of everybody. Ooh, Duke Mildew, I believe you have a very important question to ask my father. Sorry, got to run. You could be, sir, I ask for your daughter's hand in marriage. Oh, Duke Mildew, I am the luckiest woman in the Western Hemisphere. The ones in Eastern Hemisphere might be slightly more lucky. And so there it is. Every now and again, the only benefit to being married is that you get a score bonus for it. And then every now and again, you can check in with your wife at Petit Guave and she'll have stuff for you. Just like things. If you need items, sometimes she'll have items. We have all the items right now, so that's not going to be possible. But she'll probably give us map pieces from now on, which is good because we need to find some lost cities of the Incas. Otherwise, we're not going to be getting any guap. Not going to be getting ourselves any extra gold doubloons, any trinkets. Let's head on over to St. Martin or St. Kitts. I'm sorry, I always say St. Martin's, but I meant St. Kitts. I think you can romance multiple women, as I recall. I think you can romance them, but I don't think you can marry them. Like, you can get them all charged up, but you can't, like, seal the deal or anything. 
just so you know what I mean. Giggity, giggity, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, and eh, eh, pinch, squeal, and all that. God. <laughs> oh. Relationships are fun. Relationships are enjoyable, like, I don't know. I'm not going there. I'm not going to talk about it because I'm going to sound like a spiteful old man. Everybody's like, damn, Splattercat. Be like one of those people trying to give relationship advice when I'm not qualified to give it. I don't want to be one of those people. Like, you always see those posts, like, on Facebook, like, 10 things that, like, it's always on the front page of, like, random magazines when you're at the checkout counter, too. Like, 10 things to win the girl of your dreams. And it's always, like, ridiculously vague stuff. Like, make eye contact. Like, yeah, you make eye contact with everybody when you talk to them. How does that help me at all? I mean, I guess, sit up straight. Like, really? Is that, like, I guess, is slouching unattractive? I don't know. I slouch all the time, and it seems to have worked out okay for me. I mean, the whole I don't shave, I slouch, and I don't do my laundry slacker thing, it seems to have worked out in the long run for me. There were some times in my late teens, early 20s, where it was looking a little bit ugly, like I was going to end up working at Rayleigh's for the rest of my life. But, there's always time for things to change. If you're, like, that's one thing I would say, is, on a more serious note, if you're ever at, like, one of those periods in your life where you feel like just everything is just droll and nothing's ever going to change, eh, Give it some time. Go like mess around with the hobby for a little while. I bet you I bet you it'll turn around. See if we can get a promotion here. Alright, so now we are a Baron. And Yeah, she's got Oh, that's right. She had the suitor. I forgot about this. Okay, let's go ahead and take care of him. And so, down he goes. A thousand gold reward is offered for Mr. Shatterly, who is in Guadalupe. My chances of going to Guadalupe are fairly limited. I just don't see myself getting down that way. I'm not going to focus too much. Uh, going down to Cartagena now. Damn, we got like all kinds of sailing to do. We got problems. We got real problems. Well, I don't see myself going out to... Oh, never mind. Guadalupe. I thought Guadalupe was up in the northwest for some weird reason. Alright, I can see myself going down here for now. Let's check foreign relations. Everybody is still beating up on the Spanish. So what we want to do is we want to set up near Trinidad so that we can run in between Barbados and Trinidad. Just beating up the Spanish, getting all the upgrades we can. After that, we'll sue for amnesty. We'll flip around and essentially we can beat up whoever we want at that point to make ourselves a little bit more friendly. To dig in a little bit deeper with the Spanish and get ourselves the maximum promotion right there. For now, I'm thinking we may actually want to break off the episode right here. I'm feeling a little bit tired for the day. I think my voice is about to give out on me. So I think I'm going to break it off right here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me in the Nerd Castle for another episode of Sid Meier's Pirates. Where I just talk out of my ass for 25 minutes. And everybody comes to join me as we play super awesome games from my youth. Take care out there everybody and I will see you in the next episode.